Yaystar S Series PBX is an on-premise business film system, coming with a series of communication features, an intuitive web GUI, and Lincoln's unified communications app. In this video, we will provide you a quick and simple instruction for installing and configuring the S Series PBX. Let's check it out. Take S20 as an example. The way to install S50 is very similar. Please check the linked video for hardware installation of S100 and S300. There are five types of modules which will expand ports on the PBX to connect different lines. Let's see how to install modules. Before we get started, make sure the PBX has been switched off and powered off to protect us from electric shock. There are some LED indicators on the front panel of S20. From left to right, VR, Power Indicator, System Indicator, One Port Indicator, Name Port Indicator, and four indicators of RJ11 ports. Turn to the back panel. Here are some ports. From left to right, there are respectively four RJ11 ports, One Port, LAN Port, TF slot, one antenna socket, reset button, and power input. Loosen the screws on the bottom, remove the plastic cover. Here shows the internal structure. Two slots are available for module installation. Each slot is connected to two RJ11 ports on the back panel. So whatever module we fixed on the slot, it changes the function of the port. Though pins on each module vary, the installation are almost the same. Taking a 4G LTE module as an example, adjust its direction according to the number of pins on each side, match the slot, press the module vertically with average strength on each end, then connect an antenna to the 4G LTE module, take off the round piece, connect the module and the antenna with the cable, fix the antenna. On the slot 1, install an O2 module. Then, we put the cover back and fix all the screws. Now connect the power cord, turn on the device. We can check the status of the LED indicators on the front panel to see if the equipment is running normally. The power indicator shall be static green, the system integrator is on and will be blinking green in a few seconds. The indicators of WAN port and LAN port will be on if connected to the network. The port indicators will become orange for a few seconds, then turn off for a few seconds, and finally, turn to a kind of color. The color depends on the module we have installed. Plug a PSD in line in port 1, the indicator will turn static red. Now, all indicator status are normal connect the LAN port to the local network environment, we can log in the system and start the configuration. This video will instruct you how to configure a basic and functional telephone system. Check the linked video if you need more advanced settings. To log in the web GUI, we need to open a web browser. Enter the IP address of the Asterisk PBX. All models default IP address is the same. 192.168 Point five, point one fifty. Press Enter. We've come to the login interface. This is the default admin login account. At the upper right corner, we can also select the system language to a proper one before logging. On the first time logging, we can follow the configuration wizard and finish the basic settings to make the telephone system work. However, if you're familiar with the operations, you can also skip the configuration wizard and start from the main menu. Now, let's get started with the configuration wizard. There are 7 steps in total. Step 1. Set the date and time as well as the system prompt language. Set the time according to our local time. Now, we could select the time zone for our location in this drop-down list and choose whether to enable daylight saving time here. We've got two methods to configure the exact time. First, synchronize with NTP server. If the PBX will have access to the internet, enter the address of certain NTP server, so the time will be synced with the NTP server automatically. Or instead, set up the time manually. 
Set the prompt language. By default, the one in the local language is available for most areas. If you can't find your language, set PBX Network first, and then return here to download the proper system language. Down here, customize the parameters of the PSTN line according to your local carrier's requirement. If you don't use an analog line, this part will be invisible. Next step, change the default password to a much stronger one to protect the system. Enter the default password first, then set a new password twice. Besides, set a valid admin's mailbox. Okay, now let's see the network interfaces of the PBX. To have the PBX work normally in our local network environment, we're supposed to configure the interface according to the local network rules. If you want to learn more about the network settings, click and check our linked video. Say we set it in this way. Click Next. Remember to configure all the settings and then reboot your system. Wait for a few seconds. Enter PBX new IP address and log in the system with the new password. Now test the network connection. It's working normally. Click on Next and now we're going to create extensions for all internal users. By system default, all the extension numbers fall in this page. If you want to redefine it, get to the settings, click on General, then Preference, and change the range here. Now, let's get back to the configuration wizard. Five extensions have been created by default. If we want to create more extensions, click here. Set the starting extension number and the number of extensions. Back to the menu, we can also use a CSV file to create a bunch of extensions at the same time. Click on Upload and download a template. Open it and we can start editing it directly. Then upload it to the PBX and all the extensions will be listed here. Now, customize the name and mail address for each user. For extension users, they can use Lancus on the Android, iOS, Windows, as well as Mac, which turns the mobile and PC into a remote extension of the PBX and get them connected anywhere, anytime. A 30-day free trial of Lancus Cloud Service has been activated. All internal users can enjoy rich telephony and collaboration features. What we need is simply sending activation mails to all users. More details about Lancus, please check our Lancus Quick Start Guide in our channel. To make phone calls, we need to set up trunks. We can check the status of physical trunks here. If we want to use a SIP trunk, we can add it over here. Click on Add. We need to confirm the relevant information with our service provider and type it in. There are two methods to finish the basic settings. One is to create a template SIP trunk and the other is to create a generic SIP trunk. It depends on the ITSP your SIP trunk is supplied from. If your ITSP is listed, you can create a templated SIP trunk with pre-configuration settings. If you cannot find your trunk provider, don't worry, you can also create a generic SIP trunk with all parameters to be configured manually. In summary, we can have an overview of all the settings we've done to the bottom. As we can see, activation mails have been sent to these users successfully. Users can register to the PBX with the login information involved in the mail. Users simply need to download Lancus Mobile Client from App Store or Google Play, or install Lancus Desktop Client on Windows or Mac by clicking the link here. Open an activation mail, we could scan the QR code to log in Lancus Mobile Client, and copy the login link to log in Lancus Desktop Client. 
Now, users can make internal calls to each other, make outgoing calls through trucks available and receive incoming calls with Linka's client. If you want to customize rules for incoming and outgoing calls, please click on settings and go for the call control to create more inbound and outbound roads. Back to the configuration wizard. If you want to learn more about the configurations, get to our help center by clicking the icon up here. Okay, that was all for the S-Series PBX Quick Start Guide. Thanks for watching. For more detailed configuration guide, please refer to Yaystar S-Series PBX User Manual and check the linked video.